All right, guys, so Power Book 2 Season 2 just dropped its finale, and I'm very excited to talk about it. But before we do that, I got to go over a few things. One, this is not going to be my normal review. Um, I'm not really going to be doing a ratings or anything like that. I'm just going to be speaking my mind, just giving my thoughts on the whole season in general, my f the finale especially. I'm um, just really just going to be going over, you know, what I liked, what stood out to me about it. You know, some things I might think happen will happen in season three. But as far as like giving a rating scale, nah, we're not going to I'm not going to really do that for TV shows. I just want to do something a little different, you know, with this um, second spoiler filled review. You have been warned now. This is all spoilers. I'm going to just be talking. I'm not going to do a play by play of like each episode and, you know, tell you what happened and everything. But I am going to be giving out key events that happened in the season and possibly previous uh, events that happened in other power series. But this show has been going on for a very long time. We're on like technically if you want to count, you know, the original power series, we're on season eight of this whole thing. So, yeah, this is going to have a lot of spoilers in it. So you have been warned. So season two picks up right where we left off in season one with Tariq dealing with the aftermath of him killing his professor Jabari Reynolds. Kane, who was an accomplice in that murder, is also trying to make sure he can get back in good terms with Monet by backdooring her whole operation and dealing with this guy named Mecca slash Dante. Little does Kane know, Mecca is actually an informant by the FBI, CIA or DEA, whichever he was working with. He was basically an informant and he used to be romantically involved with Monet, his mother they had a son his name was Zeke and Zeke was also four years older than everybody in the fourth grade how nobody understood how anybody everybody missed that I have no idea but it happened it's power though we just skip over that kind of stuff we just have fun with it it's television we're just gonna have fun meanwhile you have Lorenzo who's Monet's husband getting out on a technicality trying to get things to go back to the way they were before he went in jail which basically means he wants to run the whole thing. He wants Drew, of course, to be his right-hand man. He wants Kane to just be the big, dumb sidekick. He wants Diana to be going to school. And he wants Monet to just have dinner ready when he gets home from work in the streets. A simple life, as as he would say. I, I, don't, I, don't, try, I don't believe in that. That's not, that's not, that's not at all what I think is a simple life. Women, you guys do what you want to do. You know, if you want to work the corner, you work the corner with not not you know sexually you know with drugs and stuff like that you know let's just move on let's just move on it's, it's okay we'll just move on so that's basically the whole setup of season two you know and before i get too deep into my season two thoughts i just want to you know give credit where it's credit's due look 50 cent and courtney kemp they are putting their foot in this thing they call television look man i've been thoroughly impressed with every spinoff that's come off at, that's come on after you know, season six of Power, which I thought was incredibly bad. I thought it was just rushed. I was not, I, the only reason I honestly finished season six of Power is just because I wanted to know who killed Ghost. But when I tell you those episodes, honestly, just felt like a big waste of time. It just felt like lazy writing. They it didn't really put together. I mean, it, it didn't really just, it just, you know, felt rushed. It felt like they were just trying to get this thing over with. And I see why, because they're trying, they were trying to get to these spinoffs. But I mean, you didn't have to rush the season like that. But I, I am very grateful to what you guys are creating now. These these shows are amazing. I have enjoyed every single one, especially BMF. You know, not only that, not only are the shows amazing, the theme songs. I mean, guys, it goes Peacemaker. If you haven't seen Peacemaker, check it out. The Peacemaker theme song, Power theme songs, and then it's just everything else down there. Everything else is it's just there's no comparison. 50 Cent is doing his thing, man. I really, I really just have to shout that out. Remember that feeling you had as a kid, you know, when you woke up for Saturday morning cartoons, you know, you were all giddy and ready to, you know, watch them throughout the day or however long you were watching Saturday morning cartoons. I think that's what 50 Cent has done to Saturday nights. He's turned that, he's turned that for adults into Saturday. He's turned Saturday morning cartoons into Saturday nights for us. Like now we just wait till midnight waiting for the next power episode and we're just all we're just all very excited for it so 50 cent has done a phenomenal job with his tv thing i'm very excited to see any spinoff of any character he does in this po whole power universe i'm honestly ready to see a lot more i'm ready to see a lot more that what he has so to kind of kick my whole thoughts off on the season i'm gonna start with a cliffhanger that you know from episode nine had everybody wondering whether or not you know the girl was dead or not and spoiler alert ladies and gentlemen like i said in the beginning of this yeah, Lauren's dead. It was confirmed in this episode, Lauren died. They deemed it a car accident, same way they deemed Carrie's a suicide. And I gotta be honest, with these two deaths, I, I just, Carrie's more so, I just didn't feel satisfied with the way they just handled it. They, I felt like they kind of just 
glanced over the fact that she's dead and that that it was deemed a suicide and that like i get it you know she just got embarrassed in court badly by davis and it's just like i just don't think you know as skeptical as people are about like the littlest things in this show i don't necessarily think it, the fact that nobody was as, as skeptical except zeke and the detective those were the only two that necessarily seemed to show any care about carrie um, other than that, nobody else was really skeptical about it. So I kind of felt, you know, weird that they just glanced over that one. And Lauren's, they, you know, that was, that wasn't a focal point in this episode. You know, Tariq asked a few questions about it. Sax came up to him, but it was just like, it, that I felt like it was kind of glanced over too. Now, Lauren's death, on the other hand, I do feel like we may see a storyline with that in season three, only due to the fact that we don't necessarily know what Effie's full motives were or why she did it or why she killed her. I mean, granted, maybe it was just because, you know, she knew that she was a snitch and, you know, that's that's all Effie was, ever, Effie was ever talking about, you know, that she was a snitch and she wanted to make sure that, you know, she couldn't say anything. And she what just had to be done had to be done. Maybe Brayden ended up telling her what Kane was going to do to him if, you know, Lauren didn't end up dead. So there's a lot of speculation there. Um, I'm just going to wait for season three on that one just because I... Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think the motives were. Uh, honestly, I'm very interested to hear. But as far as it go, as far as you know, Effie goes. I I'm really really looking forward to see what happens with that with her with her character and where that takes her and Tariq's relationship. Because Tariq said in this episode, in the finale, you know, she's the only person other than his mother who he can trust. And you know that that's a big statement right there. Because Tariq, you know how much Tariq loves his mother and. You know, he only ever wants to get back to her or only ever wants her to get out of witness protection. So for him to say something like that to Effie, which I got to be honest, I didn't I didn't think, you know, him and Effie have history. You know, they, they've been together since, uh, you know, they've had a relationship with each other since the original power. But I, I didn't think they were that close for him to be saying something like that. And just the fact that, you know, she kind of betrayed him on, you know, not multiple occasions, but he she betrayed him on some occasions, you know, and. She doesn't always, and she doesn't always, you know, move as smart as, you know, she thinks she does. Well, actually, no, I'm wrong about that. She's pretty smart. Effie's a pretty smart girl. She knows what she's doing. Uh, I just feel like she kind of just backdoors Tariq a little too much, you know, for him to say something on that scale. But, you know, who knows, you know, maybe that's just how Tariq feels about it. As far as the court case goes, though, with Tariq dealing with D Jabari and Officer Ramirez, he gets off clean. Braden comes in with a fantastic, fantastic testimony. And, you know, he does a great job of just blaming it on himself. Uh, I gotta be honest, man. Braden really impressed me this entire season. I will say, him and Tariq's relationship, I've always loved. I've always loved Braden as a character. But, I mean, this season just made me appreciate him a little bit more. Just because you really see you know, that he would actually, like, what lengths he's willing to go for Tariq, like, how how really ride or die their relationship is. And, of course, you know, everybody knows about the parallels in this show. You know, Tariq and, uh, Tariq and Brayden are the ghost and Tommy of this show. Effie, in my opinion, is definitely playing into that Tasha St. Patrick role. Let me know if you guys think something different, but I think she's definitely playing into that Tasha St. Patrick role. But as far as Tariq and Brayden go, I really love how they, you know, went into depth about how really how much Brayden would ride for Tariq. I, I I, would say Tariq it would ride for Brayden the same. I hope so. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they go, They, I'm hoping that they put, you know, Brayden in some sort of situation where he does have to do that. Cause I mean, in this in this season, Tariq was the one in court the whole time and Brayden had to deal with Kane on the outside. He had to deal with all this other stuff with Effie. So, you know, Brayden was really doing a lot of running around for Tariq. I, I really want to see if Tariq would do that for Brayden. I do believe he would. But, you know, I just, you know, you just got to see it. You just got to see the links that Tariq would go. Because, you know, when it comes to when it comes to Tariq, you know, he's very selfish. He's like his dad. You know, although he likes to tell himself he's not like his dad all the time, he's like his dad. You you were your daddy's son, my friend. You you were definitely turning into, you're definitely turning into ghosts. I mean, this, you know, look, that, that's the, that's the, for those who don't know, that, that's the, that's the little hand, little hand sing, symbol, signal that he makes when he stands, that when he means business. When he's basically telling you that you know I run this, I run this jump. That, that's that's what that is. If anybody was confused, one thing I will say to expand on the whole Tariq and Braden thing, I loved how the entire season really gave all these characters such more developments into their you know who they are and 
especially characters like Diana. I think she really had a big standout moment. She had multiple stand multiple standout moments in the in the uh, season. But of course, nothing will stand out more than that dinner scene where she reveals everybody's business. I mean, she 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 look girl, you get your flowers for that one. Congratulations to you. But I think that they every that the season does a fantastic job of you know drawing characters out and really just digging into emotional depths. Even Zeke, uh, I will say. The only reason I'm bringing Zeke into this is is because of this last episode, and the like. It was a kind of a build up throughout the entire thing. You know, you, you just see him find out, you know, that he won't be eligible for the NBA because of his age. You find out that his he finds out that his mom that his mom actually isn't his mom, and that his aunt is his mom. So you know, he, the lady he's been calling auntie four thousand times a day is not his auntie; it's his actual mother. And, you know, that really starts to do. And also, I almost forgot about the Carrie Milgram situation. Uh, she died, and he's the one that found the body. So, of course, all that's just wearing and tearing on him. And you can see that in this episode. It, it builds up very well. I think they actually did a very good thing with this character. Th they did a very good job with this character in this episode. Uh, it just sucks that, you know, he had to die. Yeah. Lorenzo capped him. Oh, Thought he was Mecca, but Lorenzo capped him. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I was I don't know how shocked you guys were. I was pretty shocked that that was gonna happen. Although you know from the moment Loren, you know from the moment Lorenzo and uh, Lorenzo and Zeke met, Lorenzo was not the biggest fan of Zeke just because he wasn't his. He wasn't family. So uh, I'm not I'm not saying that you know if I actually may, maybe Zeke maybe Lorenzo might might have popped him if he of course. He thought it was Mecca the whole time. I'm not. I'm not trying to allude to say that he thought it was Zeke, but if he may have just saw that it was Zeke, maybe he would have shot him too, just to be done with it in total. But you know, who knows, right? Another thing I kind of wanted to touch on uh, for this season was you know Tariq, the main character himself. Man, look, this kid has honestly impressed me a lot. Michael Rainey Jr. He's he's definitely grown into. Not, not only has he grown into the character, but he's just like he is. He is Tariq St. Patrick now. Like, like even he, I see him on Twitter, man. New York, he's at Knicks games and people are tweeting at him uh, saying Tariq St. Patrick. Like, he is the character now. And honestly, it's it's honestly nice to see him grow from the character that, you know, people were threatening on Twitter, on social media, you know, telling them they're going to beat him up or, you know, moms wanted to spank him with a belt. Uh, in case anybody was confused about that, they wanted to spank him with a belt because he, cause he was a bad child. At that, yeah, he went from that kid to the one we're all rooting for now, calling him mini ghost, saying he looked just like his dad, and and it feels good. It feels good to honestly see him grow into this character and turn into, you know, ghost before our eyes. He is ghost. Like this, this new book is called Ghost. No, he's he's definitely turning into that, and I really think that you know he's going to do phenomenal things with season three and beyond. Hopefully. One of the main standouts in the show that I really got to give credit to is Davis McLean, a.k.a. Method Man. I mean, he stole the show every time he was on camera, in my opinion. I mean, I, I just, I, I feel like from season one, he was definitely a rivet, a uh, very interesting character. But from season one to season two, I feel like he just kicked it up. He kicked, Not only did he kick his acting up a notch, but I mean, just like, it's like everything. It's like he just became Davis McLean. It's like, you know, he, he got this swag about him. Like, he mean with it. Like, he... Like he don't care who he don't care who you are, what your name is. He gonna make sure he get his clients and everybody straight situated. And, and it, it was just a lot of fun watching him on camera. I mean, he even gave this uh, this one speech to Sax in the finale about you know being a survivor and making sure he has to do what he has to do to that to get his money. You know, make it that that's what his company stands on. That's what he stands on. And honestly, it gave me goosebumps. I, I really appreciated everything that I saw from Method Man, man. It, it was it was very good. I thought that was I thought his acting, I thought his performance, I thought his I I don't know just char just charisma like everything about everything about Davis McLean like I, I I honestly just didn't like at some point it he was Method Man like I honestly didn't start calling him David McLean I mean yeah Davis McLean I didn't start calling him that until this season because entire season one is oh that's Method Man oh that's Method Man no. 
Like he made he made sure that, that people knew, no, my character's name is Davis McLean in this one. So I mean that was just really cool to see. I really I thought he's I thought he took the entire cake from everybody. I thought everybody did great. I, I didn't think everybody did good in the show. I will get to that in a second. But I did think that, you know, he stole the show for the entire season. I thought I thought he what I thought he made a big portion of the season very enjoyable. The character that actually took like a step back for me from season one was Monet, Mary J. Blige. I and it's honestly just because of the fact that in season one she established herself as, you know, this very calm, this very I mean I'm, I don't know if calm's the right word, but she, she was a lot more collected than she was in this season. And I understand that, you know, Lorenzo got out, she was dealing with her past, and a lot of her skeletons were coming out of the closet and stuff was starting to unravel, but I just felt like she made so many more destructive decisions that the Monet in season one would not have done. And like I said, it may be just, just due to the fact that Lorenzo and Mecca came out, but I just feel like, you know, she really wouldn't, do like the Carrie Milgram, like the the Carrie suicide. I, I just felt like th that was too reckless of a move. I thought that was something that her son would do, Kane. Like uh, she just lectures Kane so much about all these dumb decisions she made. I just felt like that was a very reckless move of her to do. I just felt like she was moving off emotion. She tells Kane he moves off emotion all the time. That was one of the most emotional things you could have done, and. Granted, she kind of made up for it. Now, she didn't really make up for it, but she tries to make up for it in, you know, the finale by killing Mecca and, you know, trying to get her family, save her family all back together. But, you know, now Zeke's dead. So I can only see her just making worse decisions from here. Now, I'm not saying the character, you know, Mary J can't get better. But as far, like I said, the character just made a lot of destructive decisions for me that kind of took, dialed stuff back from, you know, what she, what she did in season one. And on top of that, I, I just honestly felt like every time she talked, every time you know her character spoke, it was always in one tone. Like no matter no matter what emotion she was trying to portray, whether it was happy, angry, she was literally just talking to somebody. It was always one tone she was speaking in. Like it just never changed. I just didn't think there was much range there from her. I mean, great. Uh, like I said, it could probably get better. I just didn't really enjoy that part of the season. I mean, not part of the season. I just didn't really enjoy that part of her character. I thought that she was really just, you know, one. She was just one a monotone character the entire time. You know, really didn't show any, you know, emotion other than just that one voice. Like it was just one. Like all that's all I could ever hear. Like all I could ever hear is her just saying things in one voice. Like that's it, and just never saying anything again. It's just. She's going to deliver it however she however she wants to deliver it. It's just in that same voice. And it kind of got old for me after a while. Like it, like it, I promise you, in at least four straight episodes, maybe I stopped paying attention at some point, but in four straight episodes, maybe probably episode one through four, it was just, she was saying everything in one tone. Like even when she had Diana choked up against, you know, the wall, she was trying to base at Diana. Even, even you know what's crazy? Even the dinner scene when she's yelling at Diana, like it's all in one tone. It it, it never changes. She only she's only delivering things in one voice. I, I I hope that honestly you know improves in season two. Like I said, in season three, I'm sorry. Like I said, if you know Method Man can step up and acting like that, Mary J, I know you can do it too. I believe in you. Now there were two storylines that I really wasn't fond of in the in the season, and that had to do with Yaz and Councilman Tate. Yaz's storyline did have a very big payoff in the finale, um, but I, the, re the only reason I can't say I was too fond of the storyline is just because uh, I didn't know that was coming until the finale and episodes one through nine. I, I wasn't really interested in what was going on. Like I get it, um, in order for Tariq to have those family values, be a family man. Uh, he well, he doesn't want to be like his dad. He wants to make sure he take care of his sister. And his grandmother was a whole crackhead. And I get that. Um, that that was a part of. But for me, that was more a part of Tariq's growth as a character than Yaz's. I felt like this ending, where in the finale she got to go with her mom and witness protection, and Tariq, you know, made sure they were actually both safe. I felt like that was more so for her and for just Tariq. I felt like that was for both of their characters. And that and that. And that actually went somewhere. That was actually very heartwarming to see. I just wasn't really interested in what was going on with her in the first nine episodes. The most interesting thing, in my opinion, was that Burberry collar shirt she had on when she was trying out for the stand to actually go on to, to go on trial, but she never did. The that shirt was fire. But um, the other, yeah, Councilman Tate's 
storyline I really wasn't a fan of. I'm not really a big lens take guy in the first place. Uh, O-Dog is a very legendary character, menace to society, but as far as that goes, nah, I'm not really a big Lorenz Tate guy. Um, I feel like his character could have been honestly played by anybody. I just felt like just because he was in the show before, you know, we just brought him back for this, you know, for the same. I mean, if you've seen the show, you know what he does. Like, he's just trying to get his seat back as councilman. He's trying to get back in the office. He's trying to run again. And I, like I said, I felt like that could have just been played by anybody. But because he was already in the show before, they just brought him back for it. Um... So, I mean, those are really my two, like, those are just my two kind of eh. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really, like, too negative on those parts. I mean, count like I said, Councilman Tate, that really could have been played by anybody. But Yaz's had really big payoff. And that, that's another thing about this season. I thought the season had phenomenal payoff for a lot of the stuff that they set up. Like I said, with Zeke's character, with Yaz's character, uh, Diana's character had payoff, definitely. L even Lorenzo's character had some growth throughout the season, too, especially in this last episode. Uh, granted, that growth ended up him killing Zeke, shooting him in the back. But like I said, he thought it was Mecca, and a lot of that, and a lot of that's going to unravel in the third season. I'm very excited to see what what happens with that. But as far as you know, anything else goes, overall, I thought the season was phenomenal. So as far as season two goes, I really enjoyed the entire season. I'd say finale wise, I enjoyed season one's finale a lot better than season two's season wise as well like I said the only my only issues with this season was the fact that it started off pretty slow but that's because it was setting up everything for the payoff and once you get the payoff which is like episode five honestly like the last like five episodes of the season once you get the payoff part of this season it's incredible it's, it really turns up a notch but I thought season one really just put had its foot on the gas the entire time just because it was introducing you to everybody and you know it really had to get you set into this whole new world of Tariq um the big the my biggest highlights of the season, Tariq, Davis McLean, Sax. Look, I, I've been rooting for Sax the entire time. because uh, honestly he just does nothing but impress me. I honestly didn't think Sax would survive the original power. So the fact that he's still here is phenomenal. He be, he hurt my heart in the end though. Doing all that do, doing all this just to go back to the other side, talking about he's fighting for justice and all that. Man, you don't want to do anything but be with Jenny. She opened her legs again and you just fell for it. It's okay, Sax. It happens to the best of us. But look, I, overall, it was a phenomenal season. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I can't wait to see what happens in season three, honestly. As far as theories go, uh... I just really, I, I don't really have any theories. I'm not really a theory kind of guy. You know, I really just want to see what happens with storylines as far as, you know, what's going to happen between Effie and Tariq once they find out what, what happened with Lauren. I want to know what's going to happen with Monet and Lorenzo. I will, actually, I'm very interested in seeing what happens with Monet when she find like, as she's going through the motions of finding out who killed Zeke because I know she's going to make some reckless decisions. I'm really looking forward to it and um, I can't wait to see what happens. So guys, that's my review on Power Book 2 Season 2. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to, to comment below, you know, what you guys' thoughts were on the season, uh, your ups, downs, just some of your highlights, you know, what are you looking forward to in Season 3, and you guys can share your theories with me as well. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not really a theory guy, but I love to hear what you guys think is going to happen in Season 3 with certain characters, and even tell me what, you know, we thought of my analysis as well. Like I said, guys, all feedback is welcome. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm hoping to make more content for you guys soon.